My girlfriend can reverse time, but the side effect is that every time she uses it, she loses one day of her life. She thought I didn't know about this. So, to save her childhood friend, she used it 999 times, even killing me 99 times. However, on the thousandth time, I couldn't take it anymore. I said, Monica, stop. I know it's convenient, but I really can't eat instant noodles for breakfast anymore. And not even leaving me a single packet of seasoning. Not even a dog would eat it. Chapter 1. Looking at the clean bowl of instant noodles without any seasoning on the table in front of me. And my girlfriend, Monica Lu, making lunch for her childhood friend Adam Tang in the kitchen. I sighed and said, it seems we've gone back to the previous day again. This was already the thousandth time. Nearly three years. And all of this was because Monica wanted to save her childhood friend. Adam. Adam would accidentally die in an incident tonight. Monica had a superpower that ordinary people couldn't understand time reversal. Unfortunately, she had tried 999 times but still couldn't save Adam. Many times, she even lost her own life. But no matter what, even if it was just for a moment before she died, she could activate time reversal and go back to the previous day. At first, I tried to stop her without alerting her, because I didn't know what the consequences would be. Fortunately, her behavior was slightly different each time, so I could try different methods without her realizing it was because of me. I tried arguing, pretending to be sick, calling the police, but nothing could stop her from breaking out to save her childhood friend. The worst was when my attempts to stop her were too aggressive. She stabbed me to death with a fruit knife, leaving me to die in a pool of blood. For several days after that, she found it too troublesome to deal with me every day. So she would simply kill me right after reversing time and then go about her business. In total, she had killed me 99 times. She dared to kill me without hesitation because she knew I wouldn't die. If I did, she could just reverse time and I would be alive again. But what she didn't know was that while others would lose their memories due to time reversal, my memory remained intact. Because of this, I didn't dare to reveal myself. Who knew if she would kill me every time if she found out? Every time before Adam died. Monica would hold him and say the same words 999 times, Adam, don't worry, even if you die, I will definitely save you. Then, the endless time reversal would begin. For three years, I witnessed their deep bond. It seemed like they were the real lovers, and I was just a bystander to their love. I was tired. I wanted to live a new life, not repeat the same day over and over. My love for Monica had slowly faded away with each time reversal. So today, I decided to make a change. After Monica finished making lunch, she packed it up and came to the living room, saying the words I had heard countless times, I have something important tonight, I won't be back, take care of yourself. After saying that, she prepared to leave. When she passed by the water dispenser, she accidentally knocked over a glass. Before she could react, I threw a cushion from the sofa, catching the glass so it didn't break. She looked at me in surprise. I said nothing, got up, took the car keys from the TV cabinet and grabbed an umbrella from the balcony, handing them to Monica. She asked in confusion, What is this? Before she could finish, I interrupted with a smile. Aren't you going to drive later? The weather forecast said it would rain, so take the umbrella. Her expression became complicated. She seemed to want to say something but in the end only said, I'll try to come back early tonight and make you a good meal. I nodded. Boom. Watching her hurried back, I sighed again. Actually, I hadn't watched the weather forecast. She had a good memory and never forgot anything. In the 999 time reversals, she had never forgotten to take the umbrella and car keys, but this time, I handed them to her in advance, and she didn't notice anything unusual. She was always thinking about Adam. Perhaps, our love was a mistake from the beginning. Chapter 2 Five years ago, she used time reversal to save my life. That day, a few of my college classmates and I decided to go swimming in the river. Midway through, there was a sudden flood, and I got a cramp in my leg. My classmates were too far away to help me. In my moment of despair, Monica appeared, jumping in from the shore. Unfortunately, it was too late. As I was about to be submerged by the river, I heard her faint voice, Don't be afraid, I will save you. At the time, I thought she was just trying to comfort me, to keep me from giving up, but I had no strength left. Unexpectedly, when I opened my eyes again, I found myself back at the moment when my classmates and I were just leaving the school gate, still in a daze. I thought it was all a dream, until a figure suddenly blocked my view. Monica, with her hands on her hips and looking very annoyed, said, You are not allowed to go swimming by the river. It will be very dangerous there today. I was utterly shocked. My classmates didn't know her either. 
and we got into a big argument with her, accusing her of meddling in our business. Even though my mind was still trying to make sense of it all, my subconscious told me that she had saved me. So, I called off the swimming trip and promised to treat my classmates to a meal next time, and they didn't blame me. That evening, the news reported a sudden flood, and the river had risen by more than a meter. I then realized that everything I had experienced was not a dream. Monica indeed had the power to reverse time. Monica and I attended the same university. That night, I found her and expressed my gratitude. She patted my shoulder with a smile. I told you I'd save you, and I meant it. I understood what she meant. Only, she thought I didn't know. Gradually, I fell for her and began pursuing her. Everything went smoothly, and we ended up together. Because she had saved me and was now my girlfriend. I treated her with all my heart. I was determined to be with her for the rest of my life. Unfortunately, Adam's appearance shattered that happiness. Although they were close and sometimes a bit too intimate, I trusted her. But when Adam died in a car accident that night, a rift formed between us. With countless time reversals, that rift only grew wider. Until today, we had always been seen as an enviable couple. Although it had only been a day, we had actually lived through 999 days together. Those 999 days, because of Adam, I was scolded, dumped, and even killed by her. My heart had long died in this endless cycle. Chapter 3 I checked the time. There were still a few hours left. I finished my bread and milk. Having eaten this meal 999 times, it had lost its taste. After eating, I habitually tidied up the house. Then I packed all my belongings, leaving only a photo frame of me and Monica. It was taken on our third anniversary. She was holding me, her head resting on my shoulder, smiling happily. I remember her saying to me that day, with me here, you'll always be safe. No danger will come to you. I joked, what if it's you bringing the danger? She half-jokingly replied, I can reverse time. I can correct any mistake I make. I saved you once. I can save you for a lifetime. I hugged her with a smile. Okay, I'll protect you forever. So you can save me for a lifetime. Looking back. The promises made during the honeymoon phase are not to be taken seriously. When she stabbed me again and again to save Adam, I knew our relationship had reached its end. Perhaps her ability could allow her to correct any mistake she made, but that was for others. If I were like any ordinary person, knowing nothing, perhaps I would still love her now, but I am also thankful. Otherwise, I would have been kept in the dark my whole life. I took out the photo from the frame and tore it in half, placing her half back. I erased the last trace of myself in this home. Finally, I lay on the sofa, savoring the last bit of the home sent with Monica. I didn't want to fall into the endless loop again. This time, I wanted to help Monica. She had saved me once. I would help her save her childhood friend once, to repay her kindness. At the same time, it would free me. Three hours later, I took my suitcase and went to the garage. I drove to Adam's company building. Monica was pacing back and forth at the entrance looking very anxious. Adam's phone would be off today, and no one could reach him. When Adam arrived at the company and got out of the car, it would explode immediately. There was a bomb planted under the car. In the past 999 attempts, Monica had tried countless methods. She could never reach Adam, so she never managed to save him. As soon as Adam died, Monica would reverse time again. If only Monica had thought things through more and investigated the situation thoroughly, she could have saved him. Maybe this is what they call swept away by love. Seeing Monica at the entrance, unprepared, I knew that in a few hours, she would go back to noon today again. I parked my car and walked towards her. Seeing me, Monica was stunned. A hint of panic flashing across her face. You, why are you here? I handed her a jacket and said, you forgot it's going to rain today. It will get cold. I brought you a jacket so you wouldn't catch a cold. She took the jacket, a bit guilty, and said, th, thank you. Chapter 4. She probably didn't expect me to come here, because she never told me where she was going, but she still didn't notice my unusual behavior. However, it didn't matter anymore. I looked at her and smiled. When did we become so distant, saying thank you? She was stunned again, not speaking. I didn't pay her any more attention and instead got a box out of the car. Seeing this, she frowned and asked, what's that? I shook my head, nothing, just something I'm delivering for a friend at this company. Her mind was still on Adam, so she didn't think much of it and just told me to go back. But I shook my head, looked at my watch, and said, I'll stay with you. You never know what might happen, right? She looked at me, a hint of surprise in her eyes. But the next moment, 
She said coldly, I told you to go back, so go back. I didn't respond and just leaned against the wall of the building behind me. Crazy. Stay if you want. If anything happens, don't expect me to save you. She yelled at me a few more times, but seeing no reaction from me, she gave up. After all, she could reverse time. As long as she found a way to save Adam, even if I died this time, she could just start over. She no longer cared about my life or death. The person who once said she would save me for a lifetime ended up hurling insults at me and even tried to kill me. How could she care about one more accident? Before long, a few people Monica had called arrived, reporting to her. They were the ones she had tasked with investigating who was behind Adam's setup. Each time, she arranged for people to investigate from different angles. But with only one day and before anything had happened, what could they find? Seeing the frown on Monica's face, I knew she had failed again, finding nothing. Not long after, it was 8 in the evening, a black sedan approached from a distance. It was the car Adam was in. Monica naturally saw the car too. As soon as it stopped, she rushed over. Adam, run, there's a bomb. Adam frowned as he got out of the car, not yet understanding. The driver, realizing someone was warning them, knew they might have been exposed. He immediately climbed from the driver's seat to the back, pulled out a gun and took Adam and Adam's company's boss hostage. Don't come any closer. If you do, I'll kill them. Monica immediately stopped. The company's security and bodyguards, seeing their boss being held hostage, quickly surrounded the scene. Monica, looking at the hostage situation, shouted anxiously, Don't hurt him. I can give you money. Whatever you want. The hijacker driver sneered at Monica. Anything? Then strip down and let me see. Monica hesitated for a moment but then prepared to undress. After all, she wasn't afraid of social death because she could start over countless times as long as she found a way to save Adam. Everything else was trivial. This scene had played out countless times. Chapter 5 Every time Monica took off her clothes, the hijacker driver would make her do even more outrageous things, and she complied each time. She seemed to have entered a dead end, convinced that only by doing this could she save Adam never considering other methods, to go to such lengths for one person. I didn't know whether to admire her or despise her. Wanting to save someone isn't wrong, if it's truly for saving someone. I don't see anything wrong with reversing time, but her method of salvation was achieved by hurting me. She saved Adam 999 times and hurt me 999 times. If she had told me about this from the beginning, would I have let her watch a life slip away before her eyes? After all these times, I've come to understand that. In her heart, I am indeed worthless. I opened the box and then walked to Monica, who was about to take off her clothes, and grabbed her arm. You don't have to take them off. Monica struggled but couldn't break free from my grip, and she yelled at me, What are you doing? If I don't take them off, Adam will die. I said calmly, He won't die. The hijacker doesn't have the capability to kill him. My words infuriated the hijacker. He pulled out the remote control to detonate the bomb from his pocket with his other hand. Damn it. See if I have the capability or not. There's a bomb under the car. Not only will they die, but everyone here will die too. Monica panicked and shouted, No, I'll take them off. Monica tried to break free from my hand, but how could her strength match mine? She couldn't break free at all, so she used her other hand to slap me across the face. Enough, let go. Half of my face burned with pain, but it was nothing compared to the pain in my heart. I sneered, you're my girlfriend. Would I let you strip in public and let other men see your body? Monica pushed me, and only then did my hand loosen. She immediately said, then let's break up right now. I'm no longer your girlfriend. It's my body, and I can show it to whoever I want. Seeing her desperate face, I smiled. Fine, we broke up. Hearing my words, she froze. I ignored her and walked up to the hijacker, taunting him, if you blow up the bomb, you'll die too. Do you dare to press it? See if I dare. The hijacker roared. Adam was also panicking. Charlie, stop provoking him. If the bomb goes off, we'll all die. I ignored him and continued taunting the hijacker. Useless scum. I don't believe you dare to press it. Pressing it means you'll die too. You're just putting on a show. The hijacker was completely enraged. He pressed the button on the remote control. Behind me, I heard Monica scream. No. A breath later, the bomb didn't go off. The hijacker froze. Everyone present was also stunned. Chapter 6 The hijacker was the first to react. Why didn't it explode? I smiled and said, Don't you know about signal jammers? Hearing this, Monica's face also showed a hint of surprise. 
seemingly recalling the box I had just taken out of the car. Now it was the hijacker's turn to panic. He grabbed Adam's neck and pressed the gun to his temple. I don't believe you can block bullets too. Anxious, Monica rushed out from behind me, but I grabbed her with one hand. She kept kicking, hitting, and cursing at me. Charlie, you bastard, let go of me. I need to save Adam. The next moment, a gunshot rang out. Monica froze. A figure slowly fell. But the one who fell was not Adam, but the hijacker. At that moment, I released Monica. She immediately rushed over and hugged Adam tightly. Adam, I finally saved you. In that instant, I also felt a sense of relief. A group of uniformed officers quickly surrounded us, and a man holding a sniper rifle stood out he was the one who had fired the shot. I had called the police in advance. Once they confirmed that the bomb couldn't be detonated by the hijacker, the officer decisively took the shot. Watching Adam and Monica embracing and crying, I let out a long sigh, Monica, I've helped you save him, repaying you for saving me in the river. I owed you my life, and now I've returned it. From now on, we have no more ties. Her face changed dramatically. She immediately let go of Adam and looked at me, her voice trembling. You, you knew. She swallowed and continued, then before. I interrupted her before she could finish, 999 times. I remember everything, but I don't blame you. I just hope from now on, you won't disturb me anymore. These 999 days, I've truly had enough. With that, I prepared to leave. Eating the same bland noodles for 999 days straight anyone would break. As I turned to leave, Monica got up and grabbed me tightly. Charlie, I, I'm sorry. I removed her hand and looked at her. You don't need to apologize. You didn't do anything wrong. You saved me. And you also killed me. We're even. I've taken all my things from the house. The place is yours now. I'm leaving. She shook her head frantically and hugged me tightly. I won't let you go. Do you not want me anymore? Didn't you say you'd marry me? Protect me for a lifetime? Never break up? You're going back on your word. I gently pushed her away and wiped her tears. Smiling but you were the first to go back on your word. Just now, you mentioned breaking up. We already broke up. Her sobs immediately stopped. I noticed that her face had more wrinkles, and she seemed to have aged three or four years compared to the first time I recalled her. I finally said, use your ability less from now on. Live a good life with Adam. With that, I turned and left. Chapter 7 I was taken back to the station for questioning, because I had called the police in advance and provided them with the information instructing them to arrive at a specific time and bring a sniper rifle. They were very curious about where I got my information. I brushed it off with a vague explanation. After all, a life was at stake, and it was because of me that a disaster was averted this time. When I left the station, it was exactly 11.30 p.m. I still had time. I hurriedly drove to a cafe across the street from where the accident had happened earlier that day. I went to the fountain in front of the cafe. In the distance, I saw a woman in a white dress standing there. Her name was Hannah, the owner of the cafe. I quickly ran over and pulled her away just in time. The next second, a flower pot fell from above, smashing into the spot where she had just been standing. I looked at the time, 11.51 p.m., just in time. The first time Monica used time reversal and failed to save Adam, we had a big fight. I was in a bad mood and came to this cafe for a coffee, where I witnessed the owner, Hannah get killed by a flower pot accidentally knocked over by a resident upstairs. The second time, when Monica failed to save Adam again, I tried to come early to see if I could save her, except for the times Monica killed me with a knife. I managed to save her every time. It had become a habit, and she always gratefully offered me a cup of coffee. Each time, we chatted for a few minutes, although the time was short. Our conversations were always pleasant. She was the only glimmer of hope that kept me going through the thousand loops. This time, she smiled at me again, thank you, without you, I might have died, why don't I treat you to a cup of coffee? I glanced at the time, approaching midnight, and smiled, shaking my head, no need, maybe I'll come again next time, after all, eating instant noodles in the morning and having coffee at noon every day, even with nerves of steel, I couldn't take it anymore, I was still worried that if Monica activated the time reversal again, we would go back to this afternoon after 12. Hannah didn't say anything, just turned back into the shop, and a few minutes later, handed me a cup of juice. Drink it, it's the last one for today. Since she had brought it, I didn't refuse, but at that moment, I wasn't in the mood to drink. I kept staring at the second hand on my watch. 11.59pm, Hannah leaned over. Curious, what are you looking at? 
As the second hand got closer to 12, my heart rate increased. If it went back again, what would I do? I was so tired, so very tired. I looked at Hannah and said, if I come back next time, remember to get me a Coke. I like Coke. She blinked, as if not understanding what I meant. She really didn't understand. But she still smiled and nodded, although we don't have Coke in the shop. I'll get it for you next time. With ice? With ice. Just as I finished speaking, it turned to midnight. Chapter 8. At that moment, my heart was racing. One second. Two seconds. Three seconds. Hannah noticed me standing there in a daze and pinched my cheek from behind, saying, What's wrong with you? I snapped out of it, seeing that nothing around me had changed, and I was overwhelmed with excitement. As long as it was past midnight and into a new day, time reversal wouldn't work anymore. Time reversal could only go back to the same day. I had heard Monica mention this once during one of her reversals, so even if Monica used it again, it would only revert to today, and she had no reason to use it anymore since she had already saved Adam. I happily gulped down the juice in my hand. It was sweet, much sweeter than coffee. Today would finally not come again. Then, excitedly, I grabbed Hannah's shoulders and laughed. I'm not coming back, not coming back again. Hannah frowned and asked, Why, is it that you can't stand me? Or can't stand my shop? Or do you think the juice here is bad? I was stunned for a moment, then smiled apologetically and said, No, it's not that kind of not coming back. It's hard to explain. Anyway, I'll come to your shop often from now on. Just no more coffee. I'm sick of it. I want Coke. With ice. Only then did Hannah smile again. I hadn't been happy for more than a few minutes when a voice suddenly came from behind me. Charlie, can we talk? Hearing this voice, I froze then turned to look at Monica. At this moment, she looked utterly desolate, her hair disheveled. I shook my head and said, No, we have no relationship anymore. You should leave. I have repaid the debt of saving my life. Monica's eyes were red as she looked at me. Charlie, I have always loved you. I saved Adam because we grew up together. He's like my brother. Since we were already at this point, I said, Then why didn't you discuss it with me from the beginning? Did you think I wouldn't help you? What reason would I have to stop you from saving a life? After so many years together, don't you know what kind of person I am? Would I stop you from saving someone? Did I not tell you that I trust you? But what did you do? You treated me with harsh words repeatedly and even killed me? Monica kept crying. Charlie, I... I'm sorry. Really sorry. I was wrong. Will you forgive me? Let's start over. I took a deep breath and said, You don't need my forgiveness. Just go. Monica shook her head and tried to hug me. But I dodged. Charlie, I love you. You're the only one I love in this life. I don't want to leave you. Suddenly, someone grabbed my hand. Chapter 9. Hannah held my arm and then smiled at Monica, saying, Miss, it's not good to cling on. Please don't harass my boyfriend, okay? Monica was stunned at first, then glared at Hannah. Charlie, is this the woman you saved countless times? And now, just one day later, you're together? I nodded, not denying it. At this moment, it was best to let Hannah pretend to be my girlfriend to make Monica give up. In your view, it's just one day. But for me, it's been a full thousand days. A thousand days is enough to kill my love for you and make me fall in love with someone else. Even if you use your ability again, it will only start from the moment I'm with Hannah today. Monica laughed loudly. Ha ha ha. Charlie, do you really think you know me? Suddenly, I got goosebumps and felt uneasy. Monica laughed again. You are mine always mine. If you won't be with me, you won't be with anyone else either. Now that you know this woman, you can find her in the near future. But what about three years ago, five years ago, or even over ten years ago? My face changed dramatically. Monica's expression turned grim as she looked at me. I have one chance to go back to any timeline, but it comes at a great cost. If I go back ten years and change the original path, I could tell that woman beside you to never come here, or even kill her. What would you do then? I immediately shouted. You wouldn't dare. Ha ha ha. Watch me. Monica's whole body began to emit a white light, her hair turning white visibly, and her skin rapidly aging. I was shocked and quickly grabbed Hannah, thinking about where I was 10 years ago. Desperately, I shouted. If you remember, come to 36 Chin Street, Tian City, Jiannan. Before I could finish, the light blinded me. When I opened my eyes again, it was dusk and the sun was about to set. I looked around. Everything seemed both familiar and strange. I quickly checked myself and found an old-fashioned mobile phone. 
The date on it made my breath quicken. I was back 10 years ago, in my high school years. At this moment, I was still wearing my school uniform. That crazy woman, Monica, really brought us back to 10 years ago, the summer after my college entrance exams. And this was the place where I had grown up. It took me a few days to accept this reality. However, I had no contact with Hannah now and had no idea where she was. If Monica wanted to find her and harm her, then, at this moment, an elderly woman with white hair, looking like she was in her 70s or 80s, walked towards me with a cane. She looked somewhat familiar. She seemed to be Monica. Due to her old age, Monica bent over and looked at me, speaking with some difficulty. Charlie, do, do you regret it? You rejected me, and now you won't have that woman either. I wanted to punch her, but with her current age, one punch might kill her, so I restrained myself. Chapter 10 Monica, you successfully made me hate you. Monica trembled all over, leaning against the wall, and her cane fell to the ground. Hi, R.O. I'm sorry, I just love you too much. I have a way to go back, but only if you agree to be with me again, then I can use that ability again. Enough! I roared my fist stopping just an inch from her face. If it weren't for your current state, I would have definitely punched you. Monica, already unsteady on her feet, was startled and collapsed to the side. A figure appeared and caught Monica, preventing her from falling to the ground. Th, thank you. Monica was about to thank her but froze when she saw who it was. Wh, why is it you? I was stunned too. The person who came was Hannah. After helping Monica stand up, Hannah let go of her and looked at me. Smiling, you're not the only one who can resist superpowers in this world. Her words made me ecstatic. My mind began to recall the past. Every time I saved her, she would offer me a cup of coffee. Until the second to last time. I remember saying to her after finishing my coffee, turns out, drinking too much coffee can get boring. Fruit juice is better. Then, the last time, she brought me juice. At the time, my mind was preoccupied with the time reversal issue. So I didn't think much of it. I excitedly ran up to Hannah and hugged her. After a while, I let go. Hannah smiled and said, I just graduated from high school this year. How about you? I smiled back. What a coincidence. So did I. Why don't we apply to the same university? We almost said this sentence at the same time. Then, we looked at each other and laughed. I picked up a stick from the ground and handed it to the trembling Monica. Old lady, at your age, you should stay home more. If it weren't for kind young people like us, you wouldn't even have someone to pick up your cane. Ha ha ha. I took Hannah's hand and we skipped and ran towards the sunset. I suggested, how about a graduation trip? Sure. Where to? Let's go to your cafe 10 years from now. Great. Sounds perfect. 